Alright, what's up everybody? Steam with Warrior here. And as you may have seen earlier, I posted a very long video that I did yesterday. So now I know that this YouTube capture thing works. So I'm giving you my raw review. Raw review. The raw literally just went off the air like not even 30 seconds ago. So I'm here to give you my thoughts on raw. So I thought the episode of Raw tonight was, it wasn't, how do I explain, it wasn't the best Raw there's been, it wasn't horrible, but it just kind of felt like it was lacking something, I don't know, there was parts of Raw where you're just, like, do I really care, I mean, okay, so, Raw starts off, and you got, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon in the ring. Well, actually, first they're showing the stuff from Payback, but you already seen that, so. Um, Shane and Stephanie are in the ring. Then they're talking back and forth. And then Kevin Owens comes out. And, you know, Kevin Owens is like, oh, I demand my rematch for my Intercontinental title. Then Cesaro comes out. And he's like, oh, well, if it wouldn't have been for you, I would have been the Intercontinental Champion right now. Which led into the first match of the night, which was Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. I thought the match was pretty good. Cesaro and Kevin Owens always put on a good match. I don't think they're capable of putting on a bad match. It's just, you know, we've seen Kevin Owens versus Cesaro multiple times and... Like, they fought at SummerSlam, I believe, and, uh, you know, around that time before Cesaro got hurt. So, I mean, it wasn't really refreshing. I mean, it's better than most of the matches they had tonight on Raw, but, I don't know. It just wasn't, it, it was a good match, but it just wasn't, like, a five-star match. It wasn't a match that I, that I'm going to remember, but, yeah. And, um, the, the ended in DQ because The Miz was on commentary and he decided to get in the ring and attack Cesaro, blah, 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 move after move. And then you got Sami Zayn coming out and then Sami Zayn's holding up the Intercontinental title. And if you notice the crowd, Sami Zayn is holding up the title, but they're doing the yes chance like they did for Daniel Bryan. And it kind of made me, like, for a second, I kind of had that Daniel Bryan feel, if you understand. Like, it had the Daniel Bryan feel of when, you know, Daniel Bryan would be looking at a title and he would hold it up and the crowd would just go crazy for him because they want him to be the champion. And Sami Zayn kind of had that. He was holding up the title and the crowd was doing yes chance. They were going crazy for Sami Zayn. And I see Sami Zayn holding the Intercontinental title sometime in his career. Possibly in the new, in the near future. Depending on what they're going to do. It's probably most likely going to lead into a Fatal 4-Way at Extreme Rules. And pretty much all Extreme Rules is. is just all the rematches from Payback. Pretty much. But yeah. So... That was pretty much the opening segment and match of Raw. Then you had a lot of matches that were eh. But moving on to the next thing you had. Or I believe this was the next thing. I'm not sure. But you had um, the New Day come out. And they were addressing you know what's going to happen with the tag team titles. Um, excuse me. I had to burp there. Um. So they came out and they started talking about um, Enzo More and they were showing how he got hurt and stuff. He hit the ring and the rope pretty hard. No wonder he had a concussion. Like As soon as he did, you could see his eyes go in the back of his head and he was like out on the floor. I was like, damn. But, yeah. Good news is Enzo More is out of the hospital. Enzo, Enzo More is okay. I don't think there's any serious damage. Hopefully no long-term damage. You know, and hopefully Enzo will be okay. 
because I would hate to see Enzo's career end shortly, like Daniel Bryan, you know, I don't want to see that happen to anybody else. And you would lose a great tag team in the process if that happened. But, yeah, so they're talking about how Enzo More is okay, which is good. Then, for some reason, the VOD villains come out and they're like, oh, well, we should be the number one contenders. And all that mess. And then the Dudley Boys come out. And here's something I got to speak on real quick. Why are the Dudley Boys still there, to be honest? The Dudley Boys are my second favorite tag team of all time, but it's just a matter of, you know, they're probably never going to hold the tag team titles again. And half the time, they don't do anything with the Dudleys, and the Dudleys are always losing matches, so it kind of brings up the question of why the Dudleys are even involved, let alone still on Raw. You know, I want to see the Dudleys, but not in the way that they are being represented each week on Raw. You know, it, it, a smart choice would to would have been to have them, you know, win the tag team title for a tenth time. And, you know, have them go into the Hall of Fame. But then again, you know, apparently from what I heard, I don't know if this is true. I'm not trying to be like some of the people on YouTube that you know, do all these news and rumors, but from what I've heard, I've seen the interview with Ric Flair and, Je and Jeff Hardy, and Jeff Hardy was saying that uh, 2016 is his last year with TNA. He said once his contract is up, he's done with TNA, and um, I know Jeff Hardy has had some matches with Matt Hardy this year, so I'm pretty sure Jeff Hardy's leg is okay now, and, you know, it's just a matter of when he's whenever he's done with TNA, um, he said he's not going back there. He said that this is his last year with the company and, you know, he eventually wants to go back to WWE and end his career there. He said him and Matt would love to end their careers where it started. And which brings up the point where, you know, you could have the Hardys come back and have, I know they would do the Hardys versus the Dudleys, most likely. But it also brings up something that worries me. You know, what if the Hardys come back, get a huge pop like the Dudley Boys did, and you got the people behind them. They want them to win the tag team titles, but then they just don't get the job done. They keep losing, and then, you know, they, they what if they get the same treatment as the Dudley Boys? That's what I'm wondering. Now, I think maybe they would get treated a little bit better because um, Matt and Jeff work better as singles competitors. You know, th they work better that way. They can be a, a great tag team, but they can be great on their own too. For Bubba and Devon, I mean, Bubba can, because you've you seen what he did in TNA with the whole Bully Ray thing. Devon, I wouldn't really say is a great singles competitor. I'm not trying to hate on Devon Dudley, but... You know, he's not the best singles competitor, and I don't really think he would get anywhere as a singles competitor. And it's just like, with the Dudleys, you can't have one without the other, that kind of thing. And it's just like, Devon needs Bubba, and they need to be a tag team. Because what if they weren't together right now? What would they be doing in WWE? Exactly my point. But the Hardys could work as singles competitors, because Matt Hardy was a world champion this year. I don't really keep up with TNA, so I don't know if he's T TNA champion exactly at this moment. I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with it. The last thing I saw was him versus Jeff Hardy in an I Quit match, which was like a couple months ago, so I don't know what's going on now there. But, um, yeah. And it seems that Jeff Hardy is pretty fine to compete. It does, he didn't seem to be having any problems from what I was seeing. You know, he looked good. Um, so yeah, I don't know what Matt Hardy's plans are, but I know Jeff Hardy said that this is his last year with TNA, and he plans on coming back to WWE because there's two things he wants to do before he ends his career, which is compete in a Hell in a Cell and main event at WrestleMania. Now the Hell in a Cell thing I can see working, but I don't know about main eventing a WrestleMania. Ooh, excuse me. I mean... 
I, I don't really know if I could see Jeff Hardy main eventing a WrestleMania because who would he main event it against? You know, you got to think about that. And if Jeff Hardy comes back, will he still be as big and as loved as he was when he left in 2009? Because people have come and gone from that time. You've had the overwhelming love for Daniel Bryan. And, you know, it, will Jeff Hardy be at the same caliber he was when he left? Or is he going to, you know, get a big pop when he comes back, but then eventually die down? I don't know. But, you know, I would love to see Jeff Hardy come back. A lot of people are saying Jeff Hardy will be back in WWE by SummerSlam. I don't know. You know, what? whatever happens, happens. But, anyway, getting off track here. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Dudley's Vaude Villains and New Day are in the ring. And... The Dullies are saying, oh, well, you might as well start restart the tag team tournament. And then Big Cass comes out by himself. And he's like, he's talking to the Dudleys. He's like, you should get out of here because we already knocked you out of the tag team tournament. And then he was talking to the Vaudevillains about how they injured Enzo. Stuff like that. And then it ended in a brawl, which led to... Kind of a dumb tag team match where it was the New Day and Big Cass versus the Vaude Villains and the Dudley Boys. Of course, once again, it was Devon Dudley taking the fall. I swear, Devon Dudley, I, I, I don't hate Devon Dudley, but he is the worst tag team partner you could possibly have. Take a look at every match the Dudley Boys have been in since they've been back in the WWE. Devon has been roll-up pinned. He's taken the fall every single time. You would think Bub Bubba Ray would get tired of that. I know I would. Devon is the worst tag team partner you could have. Because he gets pinned all the time. Every time the Dudleys lose a match, it's always because Devon gets pinned. And that makes Devon look bad. It makes him look weak. And it makes the Dudley boys look weak. Because they get beat all the time. I don't even remember the last time the Dudley boys actually won a match. Actually, yes, I do. It was the uh, tables match after WrestleMania with the Usos, but uh, no one really cared about that, to be honest. But, um, yeah. So, Enzo, I mean, not, I was going to say Enzo and Cass, but Big Cass and the New Day beat the Vaude Villains and the Deadly Boys. Typical face beats heel, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, then you had this one pointless. Pointless, pointless match. I don't know what they're trying to do with this whole thing, but it was our truth. He can't. He for some reason he's with Tyler Breeze now. I don't know why. And Goldust was with Fandango, and then it was Tyler Breeze versus Goldust, and Goldust lost pretty fast, and nobody really gave a shit to be honest. The crowd was silent. So there's that for you. Uh, you had a women's match. There you go. I got it right. Women's match. Which was um, Becky Lynch versus Emma. Apparently they've been having a whole Twitter rivalry going on. And Emma ended up beating Becky Lynch. And in my opinion, Becky Lynch, she ain't going anywhere. Becky Lynch is a great women's wrestler. She's a great talent. It's just I don't see her getting anywhere. You know, I could see someone like Sasha Banks going somewhere because she's so over with the crowd. Or Charlotte goes somewhere because she can play that heel role, you know. But then you look at Becky Lynch and it's just like, what could you do with Becky Lynch? How would you make that work? Now, you could make it work. It's just a matter of how you would do it and what kind of storyline it would have to be. And if Becky Lynch would get over with the crowd or not. Or if she would work as a heel, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, um, trying to, I'm trying to remember what was next. You know, I was kind of in and out for this Raw because it, it, it really wasn't all that entertaining to me. Um, I don't know. I know they had this one segment where I'm probably off track here, but it was, uh, Stephanie McMahon. And Dean Ambrose on the Ambrose Asylum. And then, 
you know, Dean Ambrose was taking shots at Stephanie, showing how she got speared by Roman Reigns at WrestleMania and all that. And then he was talking about how her and Shane owning the owning Raw is got to be eating her up inside. And then she said, well, now that she's half of the owners, she, she said, well, Shane McMahon gave you the show, so now I'm taking it away. Ambrose Asylum is canceled, and now she's bringing, she brought the highlight reel back. <clears throat> Chris Jericho, sorry, I, my voice is going out a little bit, and I got a headache, so I'm taking this damn hat off. Like, it's really giving me a headache. But, um, yeah, and then Chris Jericho came out, and then Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose started getting in a fight. You know, that happened. Um, they had a battle royal to determine the number one contender for the United States Championship. You know, you, it pretty much, it shouldn't be called the battle royal, it should be called the jobber royal, because just about everybody in there was a jobber. I mean, besides Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, you know, over half the people didn't even get entrances. They probably all came out together. Uh, the only people who got entrances were Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil is back, by the way. And I don't see him going anywhere unless he teams back with Darren Young and they're the primetime players. But that's the only thing I can see him doing. Um, excuse me. Um. Baron Corbin got his own entrance. Um, Sheamus got his own entrance for some reason. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Battle Royal was okay. But in the end, it came down to Del Rio, Rusev, Sheamus, and Zack Ryder. Uh, Del Rio eliminated Sheamus, and then Zack Ryder eliminated Del Rio. And then it looked like Zack Ryder was about to win which the crowd was chanting for Zack Ryder. I don't really care about Zack Ryder. I mean, he won the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania, then he got it taken away the next night. No one really gave a shit, but... Um, yeah, so it's down to Zack Ryder and Rusev, and Zack Ryder's about to throw him out of the ring. Rusev reverses it, throws Zack Ryder over the top rope. Rusev wins and is now going to face Kalisto. At Extreme Rules for the United States Championship. And the more I thought about it, the more, the better it is for Rusev. Because this is what Rusev should be doing. You know, Rusev, if you think about it, is kind of going back to the way he was before he lost the U.S. title. Because he's got Lana back now. He's on his own again now. He's not with the crappy-ass League of Nations. So, I think Rusev is starting to go back to where he needs to be. And I don't know what the future holds for Alberto Del Rio. I really don't know. I, in my opinion, he should go back to Lucha Underground because there's nothing for him in the WWE. That's just my opinion. Um, there's really nothing left for Sheamus either. Sheamus is not really going to do anything else. And it'd be pretty stupid to have Sheamus win the main title again. So, what does Sheamus really have left to do there? I don't know. But... Yeah, so this this is potentially the route you kind of want to take with Rusev because, you know, Rusev, I liked Rusev when it was just him and Lana and they were always hating on the U.S. and he had the U.S. title and he was pretty much unbeatable, you know, never pinned, never submitted, but then they got to have John Cena come along and ruin all that, but John Cena made the U.S. title into something and now the U.S. title is pretty much nothing again. And maybe Rusev can make it into something better. I don't know, but seems like Rusev is starting to get back on the right track. Um, after that, you had the thing where Charlotte was explaining the whole controversy, the whole screw job, and apparently, I guess Charles Robinson is a heel ref now. I don't know. I didn't really care too much about it. There's a lot of people that were pissed off. About the whole screw job thing. I didn't really care. Bret Hart wasn't even there. And then Natalia comes out. After Charlotte's. You know talking crap. And then. She's saying oh you paid a referee off. And all that kind of stuff. And then Charlotte starts talking. And then they start fighting. Charlotte's down outside of the ring. And then 
Ric Flair and Natalia get face to face. Ric Flair gets slapped and put in the sharpshooter. And Charlotte saves him. And then pretty much that set up for a rematch for the women's title. Charlotte versus Natalia and Ric Flair is banned at ringside. So finally, we'll get to see how Charlotte can actually do on her own without Ric Flair there. And the title might very much just might change hands, and I'd be surprised if Natalia won it. Uh, I don't really know where Sasha Banks is. She's just, like, gone. I don't know why. I know she's been wrestling, like, live shows and stuff, because I follow her on Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. She's had pictures from live shows, but, you know... She's the one, one of the most over divas now, and they they're not even putting her on TV, and I don't understand that. But yeah, you move on to the main event, which is the Bullet Club. Yes, WWE. They're called the Bullet Club, and going against the Anawahi family. That's what I'm gonna call them, even though they're not really. Well, I don't know if they're really related or not. I I don't know that whole story, but. Roman Reigns and the Usos versus AJ Styles, Anderson, and Gallows. Uh, they're dressed up in their Bullet Club attires, but they still won't call them Bullet Club. They probably just don't have the rights to the name. Uh, the match was meh for a tag team match. Once again, WWE is having a six-man tag as their main event, but since the Bullet Club was together, it was kind of intriguing. But uh, the Bullet Club ended up winning the match. But then, you know, Anderson and Gallows started attacking Reigns after the match. They wanted Styles to hit him with a chair, but Styles wouldn't do it. Then the Usos hit Styles with a chair. And then um, the Usos took out Anderson and Gallows. And Roman Reigns beat up AJ Styles, put him through a table. And that was pretty much it for Raw. I mean, Raw was okay. There's been better episodes. There's been way worse episodes, so I can't really complain. But... I don't know. It it seems like the it, the Raw could have been much better, but overall I give it a it was a it was a decent Raw at best. So that's pretty much my Raw review. Uh, yeah, I'll be doing this every week for my Raw review now, so it'll be a lot easier on me. So I don't have to like stop recording at fifteen minutes, which is nice. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. More Raw reviews coming every week, hopefully. If everything continues to work the way it's working. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week or whenever I post another video. I'm not sure.